It's week 13 of the 2022 season, and we've got Pat Sertain, who's been stepping up to challenges all season, now at eight interceptions. It's the Broncos and the Ravens, and it's all up next. Some might say it's cold, others, like myself and my partner, we say this is football weather as we welcome you to chilly M&T Bank Stadium near the Inner Harbor in Baltimore. Today, we've got a Week 13 matchup for you here between the Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. CD, you look at the Ravens in this matchup. This is one of those games that old school guys dream about. Absolutely, and count me among those guys because we got the number one rushing offense in the league taking on the number one defense in the league. And that, to me, says this is going to be a hard-hitting game that's going to be one in the trenches. Partner, I'm already taped up. Maybe you and I should pad up for this one. This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Time to see this wide open Baltimore offense go to work and leading them pretty darn good with Lamar Jackson out of Louisville. And the guys on the other side of the ball know they'll have to be on their toes. And it's obviously not just the passing, but the running element that makes him dangerous. He ran for over 100 yards in that game last week. So keeping him contained will be a big emphasis for this defense. Jackson looking to throw right away. That ball caught. It's Mark Andrews, the tight end. Finding space at the 40. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. You don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch, but after that play, he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. On first and ten, it's Dobbins. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. 12 yards to pick up there, good for a Raven first. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy's setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Show a first and ten now in Denver territory at the 39-yard line. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. The 20. And this is going to be brought back for a Denver touchdown. And that's a linebacker showing he can move pretty good with a football in his hand. That's not just a short shuttle now. He took it and went a pretty good distance, didn't he? Did you get the 40 time on that? <laughs> I didn't, but he got six points out of it. I know that, and a great play for that defensive unit. <laughs> on here, Brandon McManus for the point after. And he's got it. 7 nothing Broncos. The scoop and score. Always an exciting play in football. And we witnessed it there. Grabbing it off the ground. And then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. From the six. 
And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. Baltimore is set to take over here for their second possession of the game. And there, of course, was a lot of talk about this ball game coming into play. Mm -hmm. Two division leaders in the AFC. Could this be a potential playoff preview down the line? Yeah, and I think when you're talking about the talk about this oh, game coming into play, you're talking about me because I blew up your phone all week prior to this one. I was so excited about this game because, to me, it's not out of the realm of possibility that these two teams see each other again down the road. I like this matchup. They match up very well against each other. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. The decision to keep it turns out to be a good one. 11 yards in the first down. Well, I'll tell you, there is no antidote for speed, even at the quarterback position, as he keeps it himself and turns it into good yardage. And it still takes time for a defender to react, even as quarterbacks carry the ball more and more in today's NFL. They're still a little bit in disbelief and realize, oh my goodness, he's running with the ball. He may be 8, 10, 12 yards downfield at that point. Got the defense on their heels. Two first downs in a row, and now a pickup of eight. This defense for the Broncos, they were very strong last week in the win over Carolina. And the big difference in the ball game, their ability to force turnovers, three of them, in fact. Being able to take the ball away, give it back to their offense, that's something that's emphasized each and every week, and they carried it out. And a good job of finding the open space to run as he's down close to the 30 here. Really good effort. He does it himself. Picks up 15. Also picks up the first down. How about that there? No frills. No additives. Right? Nothing crazy. Just find a way to pick up the first down. A nice run right there. Jackson with a handoff to Dobbins on the option. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. And no more. On the stop that time, it was Josie Jewell. Nice job there defensively to clamp down because really, they've been on their heels this drive. Agreed, and they really needed that one for confidence, just to feel a little bit better. But I don't know if I would be daunted by them stopping me on one run. This drive has gone pretty well. I could come right back at them. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. On third down, Jackson. And that is incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let it just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. Tucker's kick is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So that Charles, a season long right there. And you know who's really excited about that? The special teams coordinator, because he's the one who has to tell the head coach in pregame, this is where we trust him from. This distance, he can hit it, and he repaid that trust by knocking that one right through. And this will come out to the 25 as Hamler elects not to return it. But here's Russell Wilson, 11th season in the league. First, of course, with Denver. After a high-profile trade this offseason that saw him dealt from Seattle. And you and I both know that any win is a good win. And that's what they did last week. But there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an interception. Pick. Yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. So first and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at their own 25-yard line. They begin the drive with Williams. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. The numbers for Williams a week ago, 13 carries, 85 yards. When a winning streak stretches this far, you start to wonder, if a team is truly unstoppable. And here's a guy who's been very much the legs that have helped drive this team to wins week after week. And even when teams have keyed on him and tried to slow him down, he's still gotten the job done enough to avoid a loss. Talking with him in pregame, though, he thinks that this week could be his biggest week yet. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Right. 
They'll stay on the ground with Williams. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. The CD here, this offense at 11 0 now on the year. A few weeks ago, I remember asking you what kind of percentage chance that you thought they had at staying unbeaten the entire season. I think you said 25%. I'd imagine that number probably grown since then. I would agree with you, and I'm going to actually bump it up to closer to 50% only because they saw some tough games to come. And keeping that focus throughout the entire season, that's been a really difficult thing to pull off. But so far, they've done it, and they've done it all. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. James Prochet deep for Baltimore. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. After one, seven, three, the score on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Baltimore. It's the Ravens in possession as they get set to start their drive with a first and ten. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the draw. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Only needing two yards on second down. Man. Again, Jackson will keep it. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, he'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. He has enough for the first down and the keeper, a gain of six. From midfield now, here's Jackson. And his throw is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Jackson's throw is on target to Duvernay. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. The quick feet by Jackson. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. So not his arm, but hurting him with his legs. A gain of 19 on the keeper and a first down. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because it's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it. Most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They go play action now. Jackson under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Josie Jewell, the linebacker, getting the sack. Well, Lamar Jackson, for all the talents of escaping pressure that he possesses, he was helpless to do much of anything there. He had no chance. Yeah, this time it's going to come from the middle linebacker because watching the linemen, it seemed to me that they thought he was going to drop back into pass protection, but he surprised them and came on the blitz instead and had a pretty clear run to the quarterback. As we check the next-gen stats, you'll see he had precious little time to do anything with the football there. Another try after the first down sack. Jackson, a pickup of about three yards as he's taken down into 31. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there, bank at the 39-yard line. Bradley Chubb has now recorded 10 sacks on the season. So if we recount real quick, he had the touchdown earlier, and now he comes up with the sack here. 
No doubt about it, he's having himself a game. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be from 56 yards out. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. And they'll get it back within a point at 7 to 6. So as it turns out, that sack doesn't wind up costing them, Charles. They at least get points, get three of them. Yeah, that's where your kicker can really come to your rescue because you know after the sack, there was a little consternation there. Are we out of field goal range? Are we going to be able to get three? In this case, he stepped right up and gave them exactly what they needed. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Week 13 here in the NFL, first weekend of December. Playoff races definitely coming into focus now. And we got a couple of good ones in prime time. Tonight, national audience gets a look at the Colts for a second straight weekend. This time there at Dallas, 7.20 Central time for that kick. And then Monday night, Saints and Bucks from Tampa. And the first play of the drive there is incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Second and 10 now from the 27. They go play action now, Wilson. Man open, he's got it complete to Cortland Sutton. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 24 yards, it's a first down. To throw is Wilson. On the throw led him too much that time. It's incomplete. I like what they tried to do there. They didn't get a completed pass downfield, but they came off a momentum play. Big time gain on the previous snap. Came right back and threw one deep, hoping to catch him on their heels. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Up the middle, it's Williams. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43. And hold on here, because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. The Ravens bring out an extra defensive back here on third. Now Wilson. This one complete to Jerry Judy. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 32-yard line. A nice pickup of 10 means that this drive will stay on track. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And a good stiff arm there before he's brought down on a nice little game. Nine yards is the pickup there, and they'll have a second and one. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. They run it again with Williams. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Now a pause, and there's an injured Raven in need of some assistance. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. What? 
Now Gordon on first down. Shreds him with a stiff arm. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Pardon, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get him. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. Now they'll throw it with Wilson. Caught on the slant. That's good for a gain of six, second and goal. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. Try and punch it in. Gordon. And he'll get in. Touchdown, Denver. Melvin Gordon as the first half is winding down. And the Broncos will extend their lead here just before halftime. Well, nothing fancy there, Charles. You had three tight ends on the field. They were going to run the football. The defense knew it, but the defense couldn't stop them. And I haven't met an offensive line yet that doesn't get more satisfaction out of running the football into the end zone than pass protecting. They had determination on their side, and they got it done. Now McManus for the extra point. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14-6. to six. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And this will be a touchback as Ed sails over the end line. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now here's a timeout as they're going to get it with eight seconds remaining here in the first half. Throwing on second and three. Jackson. This one caught by his tight end, Andrews. So we have reached halftime here in what's an eight-point game. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Things definitely getting interesting around the NFL as we begin the month of December. So let's get right to it. We'll get started over at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. And those two are tied up as they play the second quarter. Next, we head down to Houston to check on the Texans at home at NRG Stadium. And for the moment, they trail the visiting Browns in that one. Nick Chubb with two touchdowns thus far. Lastly, let's get to the Windy City, see what's happening with the Bears at home at Soldier Field. And that game all tied up with the visiting Green Bay Packers. Moving on, let's take a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Broncos. And even though they've got the lead, they're likely going over ways they can improve the running game as they didn't find a whole lot of success in those first two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they had a little bit more success on the ground than their opponents did, and that should set them up well for the second half to come. Both teams going back through their game plans, making their final halftime adjustments. And for the call of the second half, we go back up to Baltimore and rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. 
Broncos with a lead, and they will be receiving this kickoff here as quarter three is underway. The offense getting set again. We spotlight Javante Williams, the running back. And he's sure looking like a lock for a thousand yard season. Don't know if he's going to get it in this game, but he'd probably like to just to get past that point. Yeah, and if he doesn't, as you noted, there's still time, still opportunity. There's still more games to be played. So, yeah, it's not a lock, but barring injury, it certainly looks like he's going to get there. And what an accomplishment that is. Anytime you get over 1,000 yards, you're celebrated in the NFL. It's been quite a season. Still a couple chapters left in that book, though. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. He had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Williams going to get it again on second down. 42 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. What? Now Wilson on first down. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. But well, you got to think that sooner or later, they're going to hit one of those. But the coverage has been excellent thus far, and it was again on the last play. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Wilson. Dancing to his left. He's got his... And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And it's picked up by the Ravens. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. So that is not the way you want to begin the half when you're only up by one score, a turnover right away. And my guess is that in the locker room, that's what the defensive coordinator on the other side was saying. We've got to find a way to get the football back for our offense. And they were able to do it. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. Now they just got a little help from their defense forcing the turnover. Now can they make that pay off in points? They need to, partner. They're down on the scoreboard. Need to take advantage of those opportunities. And this is a good one right in front of them. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. Well, if you're going to run the read option, typically, you've got to keep an eye on the defensive end. And what does that mean? What are you looking for with the defensive end? Well, you want to play off of what he does. If he collapses inside towards the running back, then you pull it and take it yourself outside in. If he stays outside, you go ahead and leave it with the running back. In this case, pulled it and got good yardage himself. That is caught with Sean Bateman. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. That one covers 29 yards, first down. That is definitely what we call our defense an uh-oh play. And what you mean by that is against Lamar Jackson, when you see him out of the pocket, your first thought is, uh-oh, he's going to try and run it. How do I get to him and get him on the ground? And guess what? That didn't happen, and his receivers took advantage. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. No surprise to see him running again here. It's something he's done throughout this season. And that run puts him over 500 yards on the ground for the year. He's got to be thinking to himself, if I'm already at 500, what's to stop me from going for 1,000? Now Jackson taps his forward jet sweep. Has a nice job there defensively being able to diagnose that little touch pass. They saw it coming, converged on it before he could get much out of it. A nickel set defensively for the Broncos here on third down. To throw is Jackson. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Miller. And he will have a Ravens first down. They needed five there on third down. He winds up getting seven. And Brandon from our time in college football, where receivers were not running the traditional NFL route tree. One thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. 
It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. On second down, there's the option going left. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third down, Jackson. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A sizable 16-yard chunk there. The drive continues. I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape for first and goal. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked down before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. We have to think that the wheels are really spinning in their play caller's mind now. That little setback there on first down. They'll have three more shots if that's what it takes because they've got to take field goals out of their thought process. They need a touchdown and a conversion to tie this game. What play calls does he have on that sheet? So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Baltimore. It's the Ravens with possession of the football, but trailing on the big board as we get set for the fourth. Dobbins. And he's going to be taken down right at the line. No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. This defense continues to be good on third down. I mean, they haven't allowed a touchdown offensively. Are you saying, let's go for this? Let's try to get it in the end zone. I don't know about that because of what you just described. They've been so good, and they don't give up the big play that you would expect in downs one through three. Why should fourth down be any different? You might want to go ahead and kick the field goal and see if you can figure out something else as this game moves on. So they finally get their first trip to the red zone, and it ends with nothing. And that's what I'm going to focus on with you, because you teed it up really well. Finally get to the red zone. So there's got to be a little bit of frustration, because they haven't moved the ball as well as they wanted to all game. Now they get there, but we got to go for it, because we don't know if we can get back here again. We don't know how many opportunities, because they've been sputtering a little bit. Absolutely. At this stage in the second half, to get there and not get it for the first time, Tom. Now Wilson down around his goal line, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides, and there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. Throwing is Wilson. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings out fourth down. Good clean play. No play is coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion. And that should get him off the field with a three and out. Here's Sam Martin now. As he'll punt it away for the second time. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out. And this is a good kick. Oh, the return is Prochet. Now a hit and a loose football. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. All right, zero rooting interest in it, but that would hurt. Well, yeah, you're losing in the fourth quarter. A bad time for a fumble on a punt return. They had an opportunity. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this Please just to make sure. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, ruling on the field is so that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be really a fumble. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. 
And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind and try to put together another drive. And a simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position where we were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. Throwing again on second and ten. Jackson. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Bradley Chubb picks up his second sack of the afternoon. That time, finally a measure of revenge as they get him down behind the line. It almost felt like relief, didn't it? Because with the success he's had throughout this game, you'd almost expect him to get free and pick up 10 to 15 every time he takes off. Not in that case, that has to feel good for the defense. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Well, at least the NFL in interceptions and nearly added to that total. Got his hand on it, couldn't quite corral it. It's been a Pro Bowl-type season for him, and the term ball hawk really comes into play, doesn't it? Yeah, I like that one a lot because teams want to avoid that type of a player, but sometimes you just can't. He just knows where the ball is. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. They'll try and run down some clock with Williams. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. Williams going to get it again on second down. Oh, a good move at the five. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight yard line. 49 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. A tight game like this. Such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead Charles back up so close to their goal line. They got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try and move forward. That's complete. It's Okuebunam. And he will have a Broncos first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Big hook up there. Forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. The toss to the wide side. This is Williams. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Here's Wilson. He'll get that complete to Albert O. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Going to gain a three on the play. And it'll be fourth down. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Denver. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. Crochet on the return. 
12 yards on the return that time. And the Ravens, they'll take over. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 14 to six, just over a minute, 40 to play. A possible crippling loss to their playoff status in the balance, barring a late score. Throwing, Jackson. Open man downfield is Duvernay. And all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. Devin Duvernay, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Ravens have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So they got the touchdown they needed to cut this to two, but now they've got to get back to the huddle. No celebration time. Got to figure out what they're going to do in the two-point conversion. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Here's Jackson. And it's caught. And with it, we are tied here in the fourth. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off of the end zone. Wilson to throw. He's got Hamler finding room at midfield. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. As they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. And he will find his man on the end route. Complete. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Again, it's Williams. Four yards on the pick up there as they get it back to a more manageable third and seven. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play call, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. On third down, here's Williams. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. 64 yards rushing for him here as he starts to draw closer to a thousand yard campaign. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here. Second down. We can't be totally sure that that was by design, but we do know that a lot of kickers like the ball in the right hash in order to kick the field goal. So here now is Brandon McManus in a big spot. His first attempt of the afternoon, and it's for the win. 
and his kick is indeed good, and it'll be all smiles on Blake Street tonight. The Broncos have won it. What a finish in this one, Charles. You know, this group, they come in, they have to fight a hostile atmosphere every snap. They get the late score, they get the victory, and that flight home, it's going to be a little sweeter after this one. And Brandon, just like you, I was fired up for that last sequence. How about that? Wouldn't you have loved to have been in the huddle when they were mounting that game-winning drive? Big-time moment. No one shied away from it. They tuned out the crowd, kept their heads, and executed the way they needed to to earn that win. So for Denver, 